Welcome, 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 welcome everyone. Welcome you all to the Ladies' Lounge. I am so happy to see you here today. We are live on the Ladies' Lounge with our wonderful guest, Miss Camille Campbell. It is a lovely day here in New York, a little bleaky. We like the rain. And as I said the last time, I was finished. I was actually finished with my gardening. But then I found out that I really was not finished because guess what? I got some extra seeds today. I got some bulbs that I could plant in the garden and that's what I did. So I ended up going outside and planting bulbs. Can you imagine that? I can't believe I had more bulbs to plant because um, I don't know what's going on with telephone today. <laughs> it's not supposed to rain. <laughs> but I had to plant some new bulbs to prepare for the spring season. As you know, we're still in the COVID crisis, but nonetheless, we still have the garden. So we're preparing for the next season. So we have a wonderful day here in New York. Guess what? I went on vacation and I just got back. Um, and I'm grateful to the Lord that I was able to, to go away to be with, um, I was with my sister. We both traveled and we had a wonderful time. And um, I'm just so glad that I was able to, to get some rest. And even I came back and I rested some more. So I give God the praise. So it's a wonderful day here. And guess what? Our guest is all the way in Kingston, Jamaica. You know, I was supposed to go to Jamaica for my vacation and I wasn't able to do it. We planned on going in May and we said we'd go in September, but lo and behold, it's October. And because of the challenge that we're facing, we give God praise that we're still alive. But because of the challenge, we had to um, cancel that vacation and we still had to, well, I tried to stay in New York. So I went all the way upstate, almost to Canada. I could see Canada and I waved at Canada and my, all my family there, but we couldn't go over the border. But God is good nonetheless. Amen. So our lovely guest here is Miss Camille Campbell. And as you know, our subject today is free your mind. What do you mean by that? Free your mind. She is a wonderful woman and she encourages people. And she, is a, she has a bachelor's degree in theology and a master's degree in psychology. And she encourages people and she ministers people the people to help them to relieve themselves of unforgiveness. Now we know things happen in our life, our day-to-day -day life, and it sometimes causes, you know, we, things to go in our mind about what people said or did to us, and we process it and process it and process it, and then times we put it in our heart, the unforgiveness, and then from time to time, something will trigger, a trigger will go off. And then lo and behold, you remember that thing. It comes right back into your mind, that thing that was in your heart. And she's here to encourage us today and to minister. She has a master's, as I said, in psychology. Of course, she lives in Jamaica. That's where her, um, her master's is. But she is going to talk to us about her experience dealing with and helping people to have to get out of that situation of unforgiveness. So let's welcome our guest today, Miss Camille Campbell, all the way in Kingston, Jamaica. Miss Campbell, we bless God for you. Thank you, MC Aldridge. Nice to be here. Thanks for the invite. And uh, it's really a critical topic, one I've struggled with for years. And when I got this topic, I was like, this was a second time within that week that topic came up, freeing your mind and the implications of having, going around with the negative self-condemnation, also condemnation of others because of the hurt that we feel. And I can start with myself, right? 
growing up with my own background and my own struggles. At times, at an older age, I wonder what is forgiveness, right? And I know a lot of people struggle with what is forgiveness because at one point I thought that, yeah, I have forgiven and I'm moving on. But as you mentioned, as something happens and triggers, here comes the emotions, here comes the anger, and not just the anger, but the anger with the tears. And then you wonder, have I really forgiven? And it took me a while to understand really and truly what forgiveness is and what it means to really free your mind. Yeah? And so walking around with the anger and the hurt, there are so many implications so many because we're not only hurting ourselves we're hurting others around us and people that we love without even realizing that we are hurting these people because for example a parent to a child you having this anger and the hurt right walking around with this is a really heavy feeling to walk around with and the child does something that seems similar familiar with the heart and you snap at that child, yeah? Hurting the child. I can remember a friend of mine saying to me, well, not really a friend, but somebody I've spoken with. And she says, you know, I deserve this. Because she was in a place where she did something wrong, right? It goes against her value system. And so she believes that whatever is happening to her now, she deserves it. And then she doesn't make the effort to really move out and to help herself because she thinks that she deserves all that is happening to her now. But examining that situation, you know, you realize that it was only, she was only hurting herself in the process because her child was also in the situation and experiencing the I deserve this feeling with her when the child is completely innocent, right? And so we have the implications of the hurt and the pain, the guilt and the shame. These are all self-condemning emotions that we carry around, right? I had to come to a place of awareness, which is very important. When I was doing my degree, it wasn't just a degree for me. It was like therapy because I hated reflection. I so hated reflection. I was like, when these people are finished with me, they know all my life story. But at the end of the day, these reflections were helping me to understand why I behave the way I do, why I walk around with a serious face, a defense mechanism that people would stand back because of the facial expression that I walk around with, right? As a self, um, a, a defense mechanism, right? And so writing, journaling, has helped me to become aware of how I end up developing these negative emotions because what these negative emotion leads into was also low self-esteem, lack of confidence because of the hurt and the pain and what was being said to you growing up, right? And so you grow up angry, you have this low self-esteem, you have this anger issue that as someone says something to you, snap, right? And self-reflecting helps me to understand how is it that I get to this point and how it is affecting my life. Because few years back there on the road, you wouldn't have gotten me in this space. Because for me, I'm not good enough and I'm not able to. And I could not see the capabilities that I have to help someone. And that's another thing again, it's like when something happens, we refuse to see the anything good. All we see is a negative. And we bring up all the past hurt, the past mistakes, and we forget that we are human. And so when something happens and we make a mistake, we bring up back all the other mistakes that we have made in our lives coming up. And that too affects how we move forward. We can't be happy in our own space because we focus and we keep bringing up back these past mistakes that we've made. We keep looking back at the hurt that people has caused us, 
yeah? And another thing that helped me to move past and I've also shared with others, and this has been a long discussion even with colleagues, empathy. As a friend of mine would say, this is a very big word because freeing your mind is actually a process, right? It's becoming aware of the thoughts that you're carrying around because it is what you're thinking at the time that's causing you to feel the way you do, the, to feel the anger, the hurt and the pain because of the perception that we have of ourselves and of, and of people, right? And so because of the perception that we have, it causes us these kind of feelings and the behavior that follows is you take a step back because you are not good enough. You remain in situations because you deserve this. And so you can't move forward, right? And so when we look at empathy, it's like putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. I had to look at those who have caused hurt. A lot of times the loved ones who have caused hurt don't even know that they have hurt us because this is what they are accustomed to based on their own past and their own background. Some of them don't even know what love is and so they don't know how to show it. And so they show it in a way that they think is right because they don't know any better. A friend of mine would say to me, sometimes we come with a big job expecting that job to be filled. When the person we're expecting to fill this job only have a pint or a quarter. And so our expectations causes us this hurt as well, right? Because who we're expecting to not hurt us, right? These are the people who hurt us because they too are also hurting. And now I've come to realize when they say hurting people hurt people because they really do not have the capacity or the capability to do otherwise. It's like expecting an ant to fly. And so we have these expectations of people who are not able to fulfill those expectations. And so in my own life, when I looked at those who have caused hurt and their own background, you realize that they really didn't know any better. Especially when you look at the relationship between a parent and a child. The parent would think that they're doing their best, right? And so you as a child expecting even more, especially when you start to compare and so you start to feel this resentment and this anger because your parent did not do enough. They did not fulfill that expectations. And so now you're left with this unmet need that the parent is not able to fulfill because they don't know how to. And I had to come to that realization, looking back, even with your own self, you empathize with you. This young lady who stayed in this abusive relationship because that's what it was, because she thinks she did not deserve anything better, right? Did not know how to emphasize with herself and I had to bring her back to examine what caused you to make this decision that you make and examine your life coming up to this point. We had to examine all of that and how the hurt and the pain that you have hold on to, the guilt and the shame is now affecting your relationship and the relationship with those you love. Is this what we really want for ourselves? To be holding on to the anger, the pain, there is no happiness in that. And so the first step is to being aware of the thoughts, the negative self-condemnation, being aware of it and making the decision to be happy. So in order to be happy, we now have to change those self-condemnation into positive thoughts that can help us to grow, right? And so we empathize with ourselves. And if that is hard to do, think about a best friend or a loved one 
what would you have to tell this person who is now in your situation? Tell yourself the same thing. Look at your own life and see, see yourself as a human who is imperfect. Someone who is able, you make mistakes, we all do. But what do we do with these mistakes that we make? Is it that we keep thinking about the mistake and keep holding ourselves back? Or is it that we're going to take from those mistakes, learn from it so that we can make a better decision further on in our lives? Use this mistake that you have made to help someone else who is going through the same situation, yeah? How can we use this mistake? Because we are not perfect. So it's reaching a stage where you can accept yourself as a human who is imperfect, who makes mistakes and learn from those mistakes and move on. Freeing your mind from the negative self-condemnation by accepting who you are, a human who is imperfect, who makes mistakes, right? And so that is one way. So you be aware of the negative things that you're thinking, accepting who you are as an imperfect being. And in addition to that, empathize with yourself and with others, putting yourself in that same situation that they're in and understanding what caused them to cause this hurt towards me. At one point, it took me a while to come to forgiveness because my irrational belief is that I'm going to let you off the hook. And so if I forgive you, I'm letting you get away with it. Not understanding that forgiveness is not really for the offender. It is for you. It is for letting go and releasing the negative emotions that you feel so that you can be happy. Just imagine sitting down every day and focusing on the hurt and the pain and you feel the anger and then you start to have these irrational beliefs and then you start to do self-hate, yeah? That there's no happiness in that. So look at the pros and the cons of freeing your mind from these negative connotations. Freeing your mind from the negative thoughts and irrational beliefs and focus and moving forward by replacing these negative and irrational beliefs with other things that are positive and can cause you growth and help you to love regardless of. When this young lady said to me, God will never forgive her. Just imagine, God forgave us long before we even know him. We were sinners and that's what we we, we seem to forget at times that when Christ died for us, we were sinners. We were considered, any, considered enemies of him, but he loved us regardless of who we were. He already know the choices and the bad decisions and the mistakes that we are going to make. Nothing catches him by surprise. He already knows all of that. And he has forgiven us of them. He died for us while we were sinners. We weren't good. We weren't. And so, because he has forgiven us, he's expecting the same unconditional love towards each other. I have a young lady who said to me, but he keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I even said to myself, but this person not going to change, so why I must forgive him? But the question now arises, how many times have we failed God? How many times? But he loved us none the same. He regards us as valuable, right? And it is through our, his eyes that we live, that we breathe. And so he's expecting us to show the same kind of love to ourselves and to each other. 
understanding that we are going to make mistakes and we are going to hurt each other. But the only way to move forward is to forgive like he has forgiven. And so acknowledging the thoughts, accepting who we are as imperfect humans, empathizing with each other, right? Knowing our backgrounds and putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. Knowing that we, we, we are human, so we are going to hurt each other. We are going to hurt ourselves. But he has given us enough. And I've always said to people, if we follow the word, we can't go wrong. We can't. And the more you grow, you understand the relationship you can have with others if you understand the relationship you have with God. Right? So love us, love the imperfection in us, knowing that you're going to make mistakes. But use those mistakes for the further good, right? Use them for the better good. Choose forgiveness. 10 years later, as someone says, the offense will only be a speck on the horizon as you walk away free. Because if you choose not to give, this offense will destroy you. We're looking at anxiety. We're looking at fear. We're looking at depression low self-esteem, and all these things can keep us in one spot where we are not making any progress, we're not finding ourselves on our purpose in God, and we're not doing what we were called to do. Choose forgiveness, right? One, an, another person also says that When you overcome evil with godly response, rather than lowering to the level of the evil, rather than lowering to the, to the level of the evil against you. And so you respond to hurt with a godly response, just as he responds to us, right? So let us try not to harbor the negative because there's no good in that. Weigh the pros and the cons of forgiving and not be like me thinking that at one point that forgiving is for the other person. It is for us. It is not letting someone get off the hook. It embrace the hurt. Embrace it. Embrace the emotions that you feel. Accept that you're hurting. But what is it that we are going to do with this hurt and this pain? Use it for the better good. Help yourself and to help others. And that's my few words. I did want to speak to you, though, about um, sometimes people um, will hurt us, of course. Yes. And um, we have to deal with that. And we have forgiven the person or mm -hmm. it's um would you say let's put it this way um right. would you say that if you don't trust the person again you have not forgiven them but you find it hard to trust the person again would that be considered not forgiving them if you 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 let it go you got over it you processed it in your mind you freed your mind and everything but then a part of you is like i don't know if i could trust them again and especially in the situation where it has been more than once that the person has hurt you in that way or um, hurt you similarly. Okay, so I just want to know how do you process that? Right, and I was expecting that question. <laughs> okay, so forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation because a person will hurt us and they'll continue to do the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Right? So forgiveness is really letting go of the negative emotions that you're experiencing, but it does not mean that you're going to reconcile with this person who continues to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You mean this person well, but there's no aggression.
towards a person. You still feel the hurt because you're human. You're going to feel the emotions, right? Accept those emotions, right? But let go of the hurt and the anger that you feel towards this person. But you don't have to rebuild that relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can build relationships with friendships, family members who, you know, may have hurt you and probably not know that they have hurt you, right? And so you deal with it and you move on from there. For, but if this person consistently, and this is the character of this person, remember holding on to the hurt and the pain and the aggression is for you. Mm -hmm. And you release that so that you can move on and build healthy relationships, learning from this experience, but not reconciling with this person who continues to hurt you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, right. So forgiveness does not mean you reconcile. Okay. It means letting go and releasing the hurt and the pain and the anger that you feel that may, may cause you depression, anxiety, and holding on to all of those pains. So it's releasing the hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the scripture does say that he has given us the spirit of reconciliation. So um, if we um, have the person has hurt you repeatedly or, or that's their habit of doing whatever it is that caused you to be hurt, sometimes they're aware of the fact that they hurt you. And as you say, hurt people hurt other people. So this may be a habit of theirs to behave in this manner. And, um, but um, you're saying that you don't necessarily, sometimes you just have to cut the person loose okay. altogether. Some people right. like that, not in every situation, because of course, if a person is married or they have children with a person, they have to still have a somewhat of a relationship with them if they have children with this person or if they're married to the person, right? But if it's, if it's a situation where it's a, um, a person that is really on it, that would be a downward spiral if somebody constantly wants to hurt other people and just keep on, I'm just going to hurt, I don't care. I don't care about their feelings. I'm going to say what I got to say. I got to do what I got to do. I got to do me. I got to do what, 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 what is uh, important to me. I don't care about them. So people like that, we know we have to, them a loops, right? Yes. <laughs> Even though the Bible says, but I understand too that um, you may run into um, a situation where you may be in the same church with a person. For example, you're going to the same church and this right. person was a friend of yours. And um, it so happened that they, um, they hurt you or they disappoint you or something. You still have to deal with them. Just say, praise the Lord and keep on going, right? Don't let them back that close to you um is that what we do we just don't let them that close to you again how do you deal with that you're okay, going to so the same church with the person okay so when it comes on to a sister or a brother mm -hmm. in the church right so the bible is specific on how you deal with these situations so you go to the person the bible says you leave your gift at the altar you go to the person and you try to talk to the person because at times, the truth is, it is a word that transforms, not us. Mm -hmm. And so you use a word to help the person to understand that what they're doing is hurting you. If the person decides that they're not going to change from hurting you, the Bible says that you bring an elbow, right? And then you try to talk to the person. And if you bring an elder that doesn't work, then you speak with the church team and that's how you deal with it. So you deal with it within the body of the church. And if this person still insists that, they're gonna continue hurting you, right? It is now up to the pastor to decide whether or not they're going to allow this person to go out and to be buffeted by Satan. And to be buffeted really means that it brings you to the point where you know that you're doing something wrong and so that you can come back in. And so you deal with it from within the church because this is a brother and this is a sister. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you deal with it from the biblical perspective of what the Bible says, how to deal with these situations, right? Outside of the church, for example, a, a physical hurt, 
somebody do to you and you know that this is the kind of person that this person is mm -hmm. the Bible also gives us wisdom you're not going to keep going back to that person who consistently hurt you physically right so you have to use wisdom in these cases right mm -hmm. but going by what the bible says within the church so you keep whatever situations you have within and you use a word to solve it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes well Go ahead. Have to give, mm -hmm. give seventy times seven. That's what he says. Well, one sister said, "Love them from afar." <laughs> Does that mean within the church? <laughs> when some, someone commented, "Love them from a distance." <laughs> <laughs> right. So you are in the scriptures. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. <laughs> but okay, so um, one situation though, you did touch on this a little bit, um, mm -hmm. to forgive yourself. Right. Um, like I've, I've had to grapple with um, certain things, um, like in my life, when I think about, um, I could have had this, I could have done that, and I could have done this, and I could have done that. And I sit down and I, sometimes everybody goes through this, not just me, everybody goes through this, that I should have been doing this, or I should have had this by yes. this per point oh. in my life. I should have accomplished this, or I could have done that, or um, we all go through the process. If I could, I would, I should have. Um, yes. And then sometimes we, we do, um, have situations where we have many regrets and we say, God, you know, I'm so sorry. I trusted that person. And then you go and you, you go into yourself and then you say, you know, you can't forgive yourself. You know, it's hard to forgive yourself for making that particular mistake letting a person get close to you and then they hurt you you let somebody in your heart and they hurt you or they disappoint you or um you say oh i should have known better than that i shouldn't have done that and then you have to be as the same thing free your mind you lay in the bed all night long thinking about this thing why I didn't do it that way why you didn't say that why i didn't go that way why did i say that why did i not say that why did I, you know you go through all the these processes and you can't even sleep trying to think through something and you're blaming yourself a lot of yeah. times really not able to forgive yourself for things that you did or you did it in the wrong way you offended somebody or whatever the case is and you can't forgive yourself or uh, you sit down and you say god if, if if my life was like this or if i made that decision um maybe i wouldn't be in this particular situation so how do you deal with um even forgiving yourself now i have to ask these questions that's okay as, as a pastor um of course i've had to deal with these things too but as a pastor and you have to deal with congregants and there are people that will watch this how do we deal with forgiving ourselves and even our own regrets how do we deal with that you know as you ask these questions i keep reflecting on myself and even when i'm called to talk about this i'm like lord i said i don't want to write a book is it that this is the way of getting out there? <laughs> I said, I don't want to write a book, but is this a time for me to tell my story, right? Um, when I was doing theology, I lost so much. And I can't tell people because I don't think they'll understand because probably they'll say I'm stupid. I've lost an apartment. I've lost my car. I've lost everything while studying theology. And I get up and I think, what? I graduated not owing any school fee. What happened? Why didn't I stop school and pay the money that I owe? Why didn't I stop? What happened? And I cannot explain it because I just think that then I was just plain stupid. <laughs> No, logically, anybody would have stopped school to clear their mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't. And I can't explain why I didn't. 
And so things like these, you'll sit and you think about, especially when you have nowhere to live. After you wonder what happened? Why did I do this? Why did I not do this? Why did I not do that? What happened? But I've grown to the understanding that our lives as Christians are really not our own. And sometimes we have to go through this path and this journey to get to your own purpose, right? And so from a secular perspective, right? Thinking about why you did not do this, then I'll say to you, okay, the decision has already been made. What is it that you learned from this decision and how are you going to make better decisions forward? From a Christian perspective, God has already planned out your life. He already knows that this would have happened. You can't see around the corner, but you can see your entire life. Is this a way to rewrite your story? You may never know. I grow to understand that Christian walk is a faith walk. It's not me going out there and putting things in place for myself. It is God putting things in place. And sometimes he's going to pull some things. And sometimes we are going to make some decisions that we think are not right for ourselves. Things are going to happen. But what is it that we're going to take from this to move forward? What is it that God is doing in our lives? I have been through some situations I can't even imagine to talk about because people on the outside will not understand. And so it's just best to just deal with it from within, right? And so God already has a plan for your life. And like the children of Israel, you could wander 40 years in that wilderness and make all decisions you want to make. It is God's purpose that is going to stand. So no matter how many bad decisions or good decisions you make, God already has a purpose for you. And I tell people, I've wandered my 40 years, <laughs> right? Yeah, probably 40. So it is God's purpose that is going to stand. Mm -hmm. So yes, we may see things, this is a mistake, and then we made these decisions and we beat ourselves up for it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And we go to sleep and we think about all of these mistakes that we have mm -hmm. made mm -hmm. and how it's implicating, how it's affecting our lives now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how is that helping us? Mm -hmm. Thinking about all the mistakes that you have made in the past. Mm -hmm. What are you getting from it that is mm -hmm. positive? Mm -hmm. How is it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it that you are going to continue to think about the decisions that you have made already? Or is it that you're going to learn from these mistakes that you have made to make a better one later? Mm -hmm. So we weigh the pros and cons, as you says, on thinking about decisions that we already make. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back to accepting who you are as an imperfect human. Who is going to make mistakes? Yes. So very important. Very important. Very important. Accepting self acceptance. Um, and like the scripture says, that we must be content in whatever wow. state that we find ourselves in. And we have to be happy in ourselves. Like me, I go to, um, I may not have, like, for example, I don't have a husband and I don't have children. And, um, but I do have spiritual children, <laughs> lots of them. And, um, and um, I have my flowers. And I always say my, I love my flowers and they love me right back. Because guess what? My flowers won't hurt me. As I said before, I went into the garden, into the garden, and I planted new um, bulbs. Actually, I bought some, and then I got more bulbs three times the amount today. I didn't have to pay for it; it was given to me. So I went and I planted more bulbs. So I, I love flowers. So I, I have to find contentment in the state that I am in now. Okay, let's start, let's start before you. 
you're enjoying yes. your sinfulness, right? Yes, 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 yes. And you know, in, in even in a single life now, uh, I know there are people that watch this and um, I, I have lots of people that will inbox me. The MCA Aldrich page, they inbox me a gentleman won't go into it, but I never open their messages because I don't know them. And if I don't know a person, I am not opening their inbox. I could see part of the message. Hi, beautiful. Oh, what you doing today? Oh, you look so lovely and all these things. And of course, I don't open it. Right. If I don't know the person personally, like I know you, I never had a conversation apart from on Facebook, I will not open the message. And then a lot of women also process this thing too. Oh, did I lose out on the right person? Oh. Did I miss out, right? Because you, you, you're single and then you think, oh, maybe I should have really talked to that guy. Maybe I should have really given him a chance. <laughs> then I would, and then you sit down and you process this and, and you can't even forgive yourself. And then some women, they marry somebody and then they say, I married the wrong man. This man is abusive. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't help me with the house. He doesn't do this. He doesn't, he doesn't clean up after himself. He just want me to cook. And he just want me to, um, which is responsible of a woman to cook. Sure. But if you're going to end up doing everything in the house and he just come home and be a couch potato, what do you do about that? She, and she's women. We go through these things and say, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. Hey, so how do you deal with a situation like that? A woman feel like she's married the wrong person or she's let the right person go and they went and marry somebody else. How do you deal with that? Forgiving yourself with that. Okay, great point. All right, good question, I should say. In terms of, in a situation like that, right? You think that you married the wrong person. We go back to expectations. We never took the time to understand who we were getting married to. And so this is a situation, right? And so we're expecting that the husband that we now have should be doing X or should be doing Y. And then you realize that this is not the case. And so we go back to the expectations that we have of our spouses. And I can say that there is this friend I have who's going through the same situation right now thinking that she made this mistake because there's a confusion wanting to get out of the single life because of what society or, and how society sees a single woman. And so it's a desperation of get, getting out and living up to society's expectations. And then we end up getting married to this person. So we are now living up to society's expectations. However, the expectations that we have of this husband is not forthcoming. And so we go back to, again, expecting this man to operate in this particular way. But how, can we change people? We can't. And so because we can't change people, we have to focus on the things that we can change, our response to the situation. And so instead of focusing on what this man is not doing, focus on what you can do to make yourself happy in the situation. Because you can't change what he does do or don't do. But what you can change is how you respond to this situation to make you comfortable. So it brings you back to a mindset, freeing your mind of the expectations of this person that, he do, that is not capable of fulfilling these expectations. And so you're, you're going to sit there every day and think about this man who is not doing or is not fulfilling the needs, not doing what you expect them to do. And you think about that every day and you put yourself in a depressive state. And I go back to the question again, how is this helping me? So instead of focusing on what he's doing and not doing, focusing on the things that you have control over, your response in the situation, finding something that makes you happy in the situation. So when he's not doing, you're enjoying your flowers. You're enjoying your walk. You're enjoying your favorite movie. 
So you focus on the things that make you happy. So it's freeing your mind of the expectation of someone who is not capable of fulfilling it. People have different backgrounds. We may expect our husband to open the car door to let us in. He never grow with anybody to teach him that. He doesn't know anything about that. His background is totally different. When you want to drink um, a glass of red wine, he wants to drink a beer. <laughs> He's not accustomed to that. And so the capabilities are not there. You can adjust, you know, but you can adjust only when you recognize that, listen, our values are different. How do, how do we fix it? But if he does not realize that there are different values and you're the only one who realizes that, then you can't change him. A person can only change a situation or change himself when he realizes that something is wrong and I need to fix it. But if he doesn't think that anything is wrong with me drinking my beer and you go open the car door and sit down in it, there's nothing you can do about that. You don't have any control over that. He doesn't think anything is wrong with it. And if he doesn't think anything is wrong with it, you're going to sit every day and wonder why is this man not opening the car door and making yourself get depressed. Focus on the things that you have control over and you can change. So yes, you can try having a conversation about our different value systems. And if we can come to a common ground, but that is only if this person agrees and is aware that, listen, okay, let's work at this. If he doesn't agree and he's not aware, focus on controlling what you can. So I say the first attempt, have a discussion. You write down your, your expectations and your values. He write down, he said, we sit and we discuss. Can we meet each other's expectations? And if we can't, focus on what makes you happy. If we can, we can work towards meeting our expectations and reaching a mutual understanding. But if we can't, focus on what you can control, your response in the situation. Sounds absolutely wonderful. I greatly appreciate you, my sister. We could talk all day long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the same discussion. I don't yeah. see any questions here. Um, I'm trying to see if I could see more questions and questions. I can't see any questions. Um, okay. But I did have. Oh, okay. I don't see any questions here, so I am going to move on. Okay. And we're just going to give God praise right now for you. And um, I just the main thing um, that I just wanted to highlight concerning what you said is learn. We have to learn from our mistakes. Yes. and focus on the things that we can change and to to not you know many of us go through that process of laying in bed and thinking about stuff and you know i remember the other day when i was away it was three o'clock in the morning you know i have a handicap sticker and i three o'clock in the morning it came to my mind did you put the handicap tag in the car in the park in the handicap lane and i get up out of my bed in my hotel room and go to the handicap to make sure that i had put the tag up okay. what happened to us in the early morning hours that's when we start to think about if i could i would i should not and sometimes of course it's not just us the enemy throwing things in our brain so we have to free our mind, you know, in some things we, as you said, just leave it with the Lord, leave it at the altar, leave yeah. these things at the altar, give it to Jesus, because there are some things we just cannot change. And most definitely we cannot change people. Right. You we know, cannot uh, change people. And there's this one point 
Okay, I always remember the devil on one side and the, 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 the angel on the other side. That cartoon, I've always remembered. And the devil is telling you one negative thing and the, the, the angel is telling you something positive. And I'm like, okay, who are you going to listen to? And I've become so aware of my thoughts. As you said, you lie in your bed and at the time, everything is going through your mind. I reach a stage where I now say, mm -mm, stop, I don't want to think about that. As I become so aware of my thoughts, which a lot of people aren't aware of. Right? But I become so aware that when I start to think something that is making me sad and not sleep, I'll be like, stop. I, no, I don't want to think about that. And I start to choose what I want to think about. I would think about like, okay, five years on the road when I'm probably driving my red Range Rover. And okay, um, I'm thinking <laughs> about <laughs> my business and I'm going to expand. I think about things that, so I'm, I reach a stage where I know choose what I think about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so big, mm -hmm. And that can only happen when you're aware of your own thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. it's very important. Devil and the other. Which is it that you're going to choose to listen to? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so we know that um, every time we have to deal with um, different things with forgiveness and unforgiveness. It's not that um, we are trying to let go of the other person per se off the hook. Um, it's we're trying to free ourselves, free our mind of the person of whatever you think. And sometimes we have to also examine ourselves too. This is another thing we gotta remember too. We have to um, examine ourselves too, because you know, there's a saying in Jamaica, you can't be too thin skin. <laughs> Sometimes we are too thin skin. Things, the, 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 the simplest thing can pick us off. Why does she say that to me? Why does she, yeah. the person is not thinking that way. And we can't, you know, that's a hurt too that's also coming from a past hurt so because it's coming from a past hurt you know develop a low self-esteem and low self-confidence so once somebody says something to you you're triggered i remember a cousin said to me what from i know you i go you go in school i was so livid <laughs> what did she say from she know me i've been going to school so it's like i've been going to school all my life and i'm like what does she brother like that <laughs> I was upset. <laughs> but that is coming from, she might not have meant any harm, but that's also coming from my own low self esteem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you're, so it's examining ourselves to yes. understand. And that is why reflection and writing is so important to understand where the heart is coming from. Right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And journaling is very important. Yes. Journaling. Journaling in itself is a is a therapy. Yes. Journaling is a therapy. Okay. Because it, right. it's also journaling not only it not only help you to remember things, it also free your mind. You don't yes. have so much things to process. That that <laughs> that helps to free your mind. Oh right. um I had a dream. I gotta remember. I can't remember till later. I, I don't know. You can't have everything in your head. The older we get, the more things we have in our brain. So it's important right. to journal. Yes. <laughs> Very so important. I, I'm grateful to God for you. And listen, I think we should bring you back another day. And as I spoke to my guest last week, work on that book. Okay. <laughs> work on the book. Work on the book. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, work on the book. That's okay? my entire life. <laughs> Pardon me? That's going to be my entire life. <laughs> yes. Work on the book. And you, you, you never know. It might start opening the door for a second book. You never know. First book and second book. Okay. okay. Bless the Lord. I've been working on a book too, and I have another one to work on. And Elder Miller. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Philippians chapter four, verse eight mm -hmm. says, 
finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Free your mind. I bless God for you, my sister. I give God praise for you. Miss Camille Campbell, all the way from Kingston, Jamaica. Let me tell you, ladies, lounge this international. Yes. I bless God. <laughs> I bless God for you. And we just thank God for all of you that joined in today. I am MCA Aldridge, aka Pastor Michelle Aldridge. Just grateful to God for you, lovely children of God. Remember, think on the pure things. Forgive yourselves. Journal. Journal and learn from your mistakes. So we give God praise for you. Thank you for joining us here on the Ladies' Lounge, Miss Camille Campbell. Keep yourself safe there in Kingston, Jamaica. And we are going to be continuing to do the work of the Lord. Bless God for all of you. Thank you for joining us here. We'll be back next Tuesday at 3 p.m. on the Ladies' Lounge. I bless God for you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. 7 p.m. Sanctuary for prayer and the word. Bless you, Miss Cam Camille Campbell. Thank you. Bless you too. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs>